Now I get this question every single day asking, you know, which GPS watch someone should get. And they want, you know, one simple answer. But sadly, uh, you know, the answer is very dependent. It's dependent on their budget, you know, what brands they've enjoyed in the past, what activities they're gonna be using it for, what size they like, what weight, what screen type, what material. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. What it depends on and what exactly we should be looking for when we're picking out a GPS watch in 2023. Okay, so I think a good place to start is by categorizing what activities you'll be using the watch to accomplish. If your goal is simply basic running and tracking your local 5K, 10K, or even going up to like something along the lines of a marathon, you're actually in luck because most of these watches can handle basic running functionality pretty well. Now, if you think your activities might require mapping and navigation for you know, trail running or hiking, there are a few less options that are really good at mapping. But personally, you know, I'd say that Garmin does tend to do the best when it comes to mapping and navigation. Now, if you're hoping to use this GPS watch to track an ultra running event, so, you know, going beyond the marathon distance and running, then GPS battery life might be that huge determining factor for you. Or, you know, maybe you have hopes of doing a triathlon in 2023, just like I hope to do. Uh, finding a watch that tracks triathlon races really well might be a limiting factor. I would say, you know, good news is, is that in 2023, more and more watches are offering that triathlon race activity type on, you know, even their most entry level watches. So establishing what you'll need this GPS watch to do will go a long way in helping you narrow down and choose a GPS watch that's right for you. But, you know, there's obviously the next question, what's your budget? And there's a very wide variety of prices for GPS watches in 2023. I would say you can probably expect to pay anywhere from you know $200 to about $1,000 depending on your needs. And in early 2023, there are some really excellent budget GPS watches to pick from. From that kind of $200 to $350 range, there are a few really good budget watch options. For example, the Polar Pacer, the Amazfit T-Rex 2, uh, the Garmin Forerunner 55, and the Koros Pace 2. Those are all $200 watches, and they're all excellent. And I shouldn't leave out the Apple Watch SE, which has extremely accurate GPS and good heart rate tracking, as well as a ton of smartwatch features and sells for about $250. And at $350, you can get an exceptional watch like the Garmin Forerunner 255, which is better in many ways than many of Garmin's top of the line watches from years past. Now, typically at this price point, you don't see a lot of good mapping options. However, you know, all of those watches that I mentioned besides the Forerunner 55 do provide a triathlon activity type. And there are some exceptional options when you move into that $400 to $600 price range. From Koros, uh, they make a watch called the Apex 2 and the Apex Pro 2, which have a very long battery life and of course would be a great choice for ultra running. And then most of the watches in this price range do seem to offer triathlon modes. Polar makes a watch called the Polar Vantage V2, which is their top of the line triathlon watch for $500. And Garmin makes their new Forerunner 955 triathlon watch starting at $500 as well. And the 955 also has mapping and onboard music good battery life and loads of other features that make it, uh, I would say very hard to beat in this price category. And I think that this price category really is kind of that sweet spot for getting a high-end GPS watch. But before we leave price talk to talk about, you know, a few other key features when buying GPS watches, there is a higher tier of GPS watches where things cost I would say $700 and above. And what you'll often see here uh, are very full featured watches with a bit nicer materials. For example, uh, Garmin has a Phoenix series of watches and it definitely falls into this category 
where you basically have uh, every single feature that Garmin could come up with, everything that they have in their arsenal thrown into one watch, and it's housed in a slightly nicer housing. And the Phoenix series of watches also has a few sub variants. So the Garmin FX2, for example, has the same functionality as a Phoenix, but it has a very, very bright, vibrant AMOLED display. I will say at the sacrifice of some battery life. Uh, quick side note, I do think that we're gonna start to see a lot more AMOLED watches as we move forward into 2023. Uh, but Garmin also has a watch called the Tactic 7, which is basically a Phoenix 7 with slight adjustments to the design and features geared more towards that military style functionality. Uh, for example, it has night vision goggle mode. And then the Garmin Enduro 2, which is also kind of a Phoenix variant, which is geared towards ultra runners. So this watch has an extremely long battery life and it has a slightly brighter LED flashlight. Uh, this is a watch that I've actually been wearing a lot over the last 100 days or so, and I'm excited to put together a review for you guys fairly shortly. But in this price point, you'll often see more premium materials like titanium bezels or watch bodies, uh, more scratch resistant sapphire lenses, and generally speaking, there's a bit less plastic or um, subjectively maybe better looking watches here. Coros makes a watch called the Vertex 2, which is also designed for ultra runners and people who just want a high-end watch that'll go forever. Uh, I think I was seeing something along the lines of like two months when I was testing this watch as far as battery life goes, which is absolutely absurd. Uh, even the Apple Watch Ultra would definitely fall into this category at $800. Uh, it has that kind of larger size, larger battery life, you know, premium materials, again, titanium and sapphire lens, and then a ridiculously bright AMOLED screen. And the Apple Watches from about the Series 6 or so and forward do tend to have a very accurate heart rate monitor as well as GPS data. And you can see that when you compare GPS plots or you know comparing heart rate data to an ECG chest strap. And data accuracy is just another one of those things that we should think about or at least consider when we're evaluating GPS watches to purchase. But I would say in addition to Apple, uh, Garmin is another company that I've been very impressed with when it comes to GPS accuracy and heart rate accuracy. Really anything that Garmin has made from about the Garmin Forerunner 745 and forward seems to have some sort of GPS magic sauce you know, sprinkled into them uh, because they've gotten a lot better over those past couple of years. You'll see some watches talk about multi-band GPS, meaning that they can connect to multiple satellite systems at the same time, which should definitely help increase GPS accuracy. But personally, uh, I think it's a bit overrated in some ways. I've seen watches with multi-band GPS perform poorly and watches uh, without multi-band GPS perform absolutely flawlessly. Uh, there are other features on these watches. Um, you know, for me personally, I don't tend to care too much about music storage directly on my watch, but I do know that that's important to some of you guys. Uh, I would just say, be careful to look at the storage space that a watch has. For example, the Forerunner 255, they have a music variety, but it only has four gigs of storage, whereas the Garmin 955 has 32 gigs of storage. Might be worth considering if you are heavy into you know, onboard music or podcasts or something like that. Now the next topic that I think we should all be considering is just the wide variety of health tracking features in addition to activity monitoring that a lot of these watches have. So that's stuff like sleep tracking, HRV tracking, stress recovery scores, uh, even providing you with suggested workouts based on what you've been doing most recently. So for me personally, Sleep tracking is something that I'm really working on, and I do find that having sleep tracking metrics on my watch to be really valuable. Even if the sleep stages and things like that might be a little questionable, I do like seeing the amount of time slept each day. And then another aspect that we should be considering is that each of these manufacturers has their own smartphone application. I would really say maybe their own ecosystem for handling data, providing insights into our health metrics, and kind of exploring all of this activity data. Garmin has what they call the Garmin Connect system, which 
I think is a fantastic tool, uh, but I do know that a lot of you guys prefer Polar's Flow ecosystem, where you can really dive deep into some of your training metrics. And Apple also has their fitness app. Uh, even Koros has something new called their Training Hub, which I think is a very cool dashboard where you can explore charts and dive deeper into your training metrics. And then the last thing that I think that we should consider when buying GPS watches, and this is actually one thing that I have kind of failed to explore on my channel, is the customer service that each of these companies provide. You know, can you get answers to your question about a product? Uh, what happens when something breaks? Uh, features and fancy new metrics, they're all fun and fantastic, but they're useless if you can't turn on your device for some odd reason. Uh, I will say that major manufacturers are going to have you know, more resources in a lot of ways. Uh, if more people are using a specific watch, it might be easier to find answers to those kind of questions about those particular products online. Uh, true customer service is something slightly different that I'd really like to explore on this channel. I think it might be interesting just to see how customer services compare against other companies. Let me know in the comments what you guys think and how we should test that. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully something in here gives you a little something to think about when you are considering buying a GPS watch in 2023. Uh, keep in mind, I'm here to help. If you have questions, I do have detailed individual videos on a lot of these watches. You can kind of flip through my channel to find those. I might not have all of the answers, but I'm definitely happy to help try to figure them out with you. Hit me up in the comment section within any of these videos and I'll definitely try to help. But no matter what, be sure you're getting out there, swimming, biking, running, rinsing, and repeating it all over again. And we will see you guys on the next one.